So in this example, we can see the effect of using a different resource template. Once again, browsing to the tab model, we can see the resource template that's available to us at this point in time. If I click on load, we can see all of the resource templates and I'll sort them in terms of the language. Note that there are a number of different templates that ship with the software and a range of different languages. In this example, we're using a template which is actually Customer Satisfaction Opinions English. And we can see the effects of using this template when we run the text analytics process once again. So clicking run and letting the extraction process begin. Let's see what actually happens. We can immediately see that the majority of concepts have been added to a pre-built type category. Furthermore, many of the type categories relate to positive and negative sentiments within the data. We can also see that, also see that the template itself includes synonyms of many of the objects. So for example, if I click on fast here and then click on display, the responses all mention terms or concepts which are synonyms of the concept fast. So here we have quick, quickly, speedy, immediate, fast, very quick. In other words, the software is intelligent enough to not take the concept too literally and to look for terms that mean the same thing. Other type categories that have been found are related directly to the customer experience itself and come from that particular resource template. So for example, here we have a concept such as line and it's related to the type category wait time and we can display all of the cases that fall within that uh, particular uh, concept itself where people are talking about queuing to be served and in fact we can create a category directly from this concept if we wished or from this type if we wished clicking on uh, the calling up the uh, type type list if you like and clicking on wait time and saying add to category create new category click OK and it creates a category for us instantly related to wait times and in fact we can hit display again and see uh, which records fall within that we can see the terms like wait are falling in here and wait and lines are falling in here we can even score the data and see how many records belong within that category and there are 16 records that it finds however we know that there are times when uh, the system is unable to recognize a particular concept and as such that falls within the unknown type and a lot of times that's not a problem but there are times when we want to help it out a little bit so if we scroll down through uh, the concepts here see what we can do to help it out a little bit we can see that there's a concept here called Hertz and it doesn't know that Hertz actually belongs to the uh, type category organization so we can overrule it at this point and t or give it a little bit of help by right clicking on it and saying add to type and here we can see all the types that are available to us so I click on more and then sort in uh, alphabetical order I can find organization and say that actually that concept hurts belongs to the type category organization click OK and we'll notice that the background color within the concept list here goes a, a pale yellow if you like and that means it's going to require a re-extraction we hit extract again at that point it re-extracts the data having taken consideration of this change that we've made to the resource template in the background and we can instantly see that Hertz is now an organization and again we could go and create a, uh, a, ca a category just from that uh, particular type category so we pick up organization if we wanted and add that in there um, if that made sense for us to do so and there it goes and does that and creates a category that mentions uh, where people have mentioned organizations once again, we can get it to uh, automatically generate categories for us. And to do so, again, we can go to Categories, Build Categories, Build Now, and it will go off and build uh, some categories or automatically for us. Even after the categorization process has occurred, we can help out uh, the categorization process a little bit further by looking inside the categories. 
and seeing what uh, what they actually relate to. So here, for example, we have one that's called aeronautics and seems to contain subcategories including airport and plane. So you can see all of the concepts that are related to that. Um, we might want to make this a little bit clearer by renaming it. If we see how many cases actually fall within that uh, category, we can see that there are in fact 11 records within it. And we can right click on it and rename the category and let's just call it air travel instead, make it a little bit more descriptive. In the same sense, we see that there is a category down here called spacecraft, but in fact, when we click inside it, we can see that it's related to the shuttle bus or the bus transfer that people have. So we can right click on that and rename that category and call it uh, shuttle bus and make that a little bit, little bit clearer as well. And we can continue to do, doing this type of thing and deleting categories merging them together, ones which we're not terribly interested in, maybe the category rental isn't actually that useful. Uh, maybe we want to pick up some of these other types and drag them in and create our own categories. But eventually we can get to the point whereby using this iterative process of helping the system along, using a combination of automated uh, processes and manual process, we can get to the point whereby we're a lot more happy with the categorization that we end up with. And when we get to that point, we can actually save that categorization that we've created as what's called a text analysis package, and we can make that package. In the next example, we're going to see the effects of using a pre-built text analysis package built using exactly the same techniques that I've shown you here in this particular example.